Okay. All right. We're going to try this again. I unplugged my internet, plugged it back in. So hopefully it's working. We will see, won't we? All right. I got some questions that I noticed you guys asked after the fact on my channel. Uh, not sure if this was covered. This is from Mar Margit. My cock spaniel knows the command of stop of stop to bark. He will stay quiet for a couple seconds and then will bark again. <clears throat> Not sure from my cocker spaniel knows the command to stop to bark. I think I think you're saying he knows the command to not bark. He will stay quiet for a couple seconds and then he will bark again. Oh good, it seems clear. Finally alive. Okay. King's mom. Hey King's mom, I like uh, your comments. I always you you, you comment a lot. Um, thank you. Barking. I got to know what kind of barking. Barking at people, barking at you, barking at dogs, barking on leash, barking off leash. Barking is this giant thing of like, they do it. Dogs bark. They do it for so many reasons. How to deal with it really does depend on the context. Okay. So, um, that's what you're going to have to give me. Um, oh, um, Luna and Wolf said they missed the stream. Okay, well, now I'm back on, so don't worry about it. Okay, hello, what is your opinion about e-collars and prong collars? <clears throat> this is a touchy subject. If you know me, I'm not, I don't shy away from touchy subjects. But here's what I'll say. E-collars and prong collars can be used right. One of the best trainers I've ever met, a guy named Gary Wilkes, believes in low-level e-collar stuff. I'm fine with e-collars for getting attention. I'm fine with for jumping fences, even if you actually really light them up on the e-collar. I am not fine for e-collars or prong collars when it's to deal with dog aggression. They're Pavlovian wise, classically conditioned wise. You can, they can associate the two things. Now I give corrections when they look at a dog and they growl. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. But if they are, want to attack a dog, I will correct a dog. But the pain is not enough for a Pavlovian thing to happen. When you get into an e-collar and it's turned up, right? All you e-collar folks, don't freak out. When it's turned up, they can associate, I hate that dog, I felt pain, now I hate the dog more. It's a very simple answer, okay? That is my, but turned low, done right, I'm fine with it. I would use them if I didn't have other methods. I don't need them, is the truth. I can, I don't need to get into the e-color business and the prong business. I just don't. I don't want it. I don't need to. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, DJ. I'm your favorite dog trainer. Um, yeah, your first life. How do you desensitize your eight-month-old lab to other dogs? He wants to play and doesn't pay me any mind. He's eight months, dude. I took, that's from Carl. I took Bosco, who you guys have seen, who was maybe the greatest dog ever. I don't mean to brag. He was an amazing dog. I took him to the dog park. I was a professional trainer at this point. Take him to, this is 15 years ago. I take him to the dog park. He's like gone. I was like probably in my Beckman shirt, like all embarrassed. He was gone. Just playing, he didn't know where I was, right? Be patient, work on that touch, work on that recall, work on that come cue at your house, maybe in a park, maybe with a long leash. And then there's times to just let your eight month old go nuts, go try to get the dog um, when he doesn't come to you, but be patient. What's my, when do I say the toughest time to own a dog is? You guys, write it in the comments. If you've watched my videos, you've heard me say it once or twice, nine months. You're right there, all right? You're right there at that eight month mark. So work work on it, but understand you have a crazy eight month old dog, be patient. Um, okay, hopefully that helps. Thank you for all you do. My border collie is amazing, but can never walk calmly. Your method is the only thing to make a difference. Hey, thank you for the props. My doctor activity has stopped thanks to you. Oh, you guys are so nice. Do you recommend using a harness or on a small dog? Yeah, I probably do. I mean, small dogs, like I give corrections, you've seen them. Um, small dogs, you got to be soft. And really the correction isn't the punishment. The punishment is the walk ceasing, the walk stopping. That's the main punishment. Okay. So even if it's just a little stop and just a, they hit the end of the leash a little bit, the walk stopping is the punishment or turning. That's the true punishment. Um, <clears throat> perfect stream. Yay. Sorry. This is a long question. Luna the wolf. Um, and I'll recognize you guys' icons from some of your comments. Um, let me see here. Okay, let's get down here. 
Yeah, I think I covered a cocker. I, I did. I answered a question. Go back. Um, Mar, Mar, Margit. Margit. Um, all right. Thanks a lot for answering. Okay, no problem. Let me find another question here. Have you ever worked with a Central Asian shepherd, Kangol, or something similar? Uh, I don't know if I've worked with Kangol. I've worked with a couple Anatolians that are like serious dogs. I've worked with some just ch kind of chill ones, but there's some gnarly like, like forget you, dude. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Like Anatolian shepherds, those are like real dogs. Kangols, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if I've worked with a true one. I've trained 10,000 dogs, probably. I trained classes for 10 years. I drove all over Southern California because I was the trainer for this giant doggy daycare and this giant pet supply chain that was kind of just Southern California-ish called Cahoots. And man, for you, if you guys want to be a dog trainer, by the way, I drove everywhere. I didn't care. I drove everywhere. I taught classes for 10 years. 10 people in the class, I drive two hours to teach it. I just got my hands on tons of dogs over and over. Now I see trainers that are like, I won't drive more than 20 miles. Well, you ain't gonna make it. You just, you're not gonna get your hands on enough dogs. The things you guys see me with dogs is just because I've taken the leash of so many dogs. I've taught classes, I've done born training, and I was in people's homes for 10, 12 years, just constantly. You got to get your hands on dogs. You want to be a dog trainer? You want to be a good dog trainer? Get your hands on dogs. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see here. Having problem getting my 10-month-old dog, this is from Patricia, to not pull on leash using the gentle leader. But when she is on the gentle leader, she knows she goes back when she's not on the gentle leader. Well, here's my question. Why is she not on the gentle leader? Just use that gentle leader. Some people, you have to use it, right? Just use it. I, when I had Prince and he was, toughest time to own a dog, nine months, right? He was nine months. We'd go on a walk and he was very stimulated. I have videos of him back in the day, mainly on Instagram, I think I have. But it was like, how to train your helper dog. And he was, he didn't go through a true fear period. It wasn't fear, but it was a fear period. And he'd come outside and he'd be like, oh my God, I'm tired. And he'd just be like, oh, it smells. Da, 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 da. I never used a gentle leader on him. I would have. I'm one of the most popular dog trainers in the country. I would have fully thrown a gentle leader on my own dog. Who cares? There are tough times, tough dogs, big dogs with small people. So use that gentle leader. You want to fade off the gentle leader? Here's what you do. Gentle leader's on through the hard part of the walk, which is, let's say, the first half of the walk. Then you take it off the gentle leader and you put it on the collar. So the stimulus is still there of the gentle leader, but it's not being used. Then three quarters of the way through the walk, you take the whole thing off. Make sense? Don't just do all gentle leader one walk, no gentle leader the other part of the walk. Phase out or fade out the gentle leader, but just use it. Why not? It's not a muzzle. People know it's not a muzzle. Who cares what people think anyway? Use the gentle leader. Some situations need gentle leaders. Um, so Patricia, hopefully that answers your question. Do I let my six and a half month old puppy kind of do what he wants on walks? Yeah, especially smelling. I never let a dog pull ever. I don't have it in me. I can't let it happen. So little dogs, small dogs, but that doesn't mean I always give a correction. I just don't let them pull. I'll just stop and be a tree, but I let dogs smell all the time. Not on my videos. A lot of times I'm talking to you guys. So I'm like, be hardcore out the door, do this, do this. But once they're good, once you have got their attention, once, once they're on your page, you need to be letting them smell a lot. Okay. Um, so do I let them do what they want? Yeah. You let them smell and you're patient because they're a young dog. Okay. You can fix stuff later. Um, my right while I was two and she's reactive to most dogs in and out of the house, but doesn't do it always. She listens to me mostly, but very stubborn, but not to other dogs and pushes others. Then they give up. Um, she is reactive to most dogs in and out of the house. I mean, on leash, off leash, uh, uh, friends, dogs, random dogs. I guess I need a little more information. Sorry. I know you guys really want your questions answered. And if I don't get to it, I know it sucks. Um, I would love to train you to train my Doberman. 
you got a good breed. What's your what's your advice for someone bringing home their first puppy in three in a week? My, that's a good question. My advice for bringing home a first puppy is have fun with the puppy. What if you're bringing home a baby? Maybe you have a baby, maybe you don't. For years, all we do with babies is like love on them. When they cry, we don't get mad at them. We make them feel safe because we know that'll translate when they're older. We work on some basic stuff. So work on coming to you and being a fun person to come to you and getting a treat. Work on potty training, hardcore. It's the only thing you have to be hardcore about. Get them outside in the backyard. Be outside as much as you can. Go on little walks in the front. I don't know where you live. I don't know your situation. But don't get hardcore. I remember my first government, I was like, sit. I was like, hardcore. I like wanted to train the best sit ever with him in eight, eight weeks or something. It didn't matter. You can train your dog sit at seven months. Not that you would wait that long. but And it's going to be as good as the dog who was trained at eight weeks. Doesn't matter. Just, just do the big stuff. Have fun with them. Teach them some basic stuff. Don't get too hardcore. Okay. Sibling puppy fights from Adarsh. Adarsh. Uh, man, I when siblings fight, it, it like uh, in a way I don't understand it. Well, I have two, three kids. I, I get it on some level, but I kind of don't get it on another level. Like, but. You're, they've grown up together. Like, why are they in their puppies? You're the boss. You're the boss of the house. When that one looks at that one, you go, hey, go. You can't fight with each other. You're, I'm the boss of the house. There's no fighting. There's no looking at that guy wrong. Okay. Your six-month-old puppy won't listen to me. Hershon. Six-month-old puppy won't listen to me without a treat. He won't sit without a treat. All right, fade out the treat. This is you with a treat. And here's the treat. One, use tiny treats. Suck a six-month-old dog. I use sometimes a treat that big. Like they can barely see it. And you train to sit, give him the treat. Then you take your hand like this and you say sit. And the dog goes, oh, there's a, there's a treat in his hand because he's got his fingers like that. Then you can treat them, but you don't have the treat in your hand. You do that a few times. They never know where they have a treat in your hand. Then I fade, once they're older, I fade the sit command to from this to this. Same motion, sit, sit, maybe like that. So don't show them the treat. Or show them the treat for the first one, then fade out the treat, if that makes sense. The hand signal for sit, do like this. Looks like I have a treat, but I don't. And use small treats. All right, these questions are coming in hot and heavy. Uh, sorry, I'm just randomly taking this. Do, do you take clients from Orange County? Yeah, people are coming from all over. Northern California, Arizona, everywhere. So that was for um, <clears throat> Alice. Yeah, Alice, you just got to make a, a web on the website, BeckmansDogTraining.com. Just got to make an appointment. We're booked for a while. I'll try to open up some more appointments though. Um, yeah, people, Orange County's cake. It's easy to get down here. People are coming from like, our law, law, long ways away. Your dog's watching you and he was shocked with that. Hey, you did. <laughs> I know it's shocking. It's loud. I, I get it. It's only that's from Saul. It's that's why your, your, your proof that that hay is just, uh, oh, and then they look at you. Okay. Little clap, little hay, poppy. Things should be poppy. Cues should be poppy. Come, cut. It's got a sound. Something like something, sit, it's gotta be poppy. Dogs hear high pitch noises. <clears throat> the top gate of my house, when I'm coming in, they hear the, the clank of the gate. They don't hear the V8 of my, of my car. Does that make sense? That they hear those high pitch noises, all right? So understand that. All right, okay. My male dog is intact and is three years old. This is from Samantha. He shows no signs of dominance, but other dogs will always try to attack him. Yeah, it sucks. That's one of the things about neuter not neutering too. Other dogs don't always like it. My dog, they seem to not mind it with him. Um, some dogs like respect it kind of. Some dogs hate it. I know it's tough. It's a tough deal. Neutering and not neutering, it's a tough deal. All right, I know it's tough, Samantha. 
All right, if I see people who I see a lot of their comments on my channel, I will try to get to their comments or I'll, I'll get to everybody's actually, I don't care. Two dogs fight at home, but are fine at daycare. That's, I was the, I'm the trainer for a nationwide doggy daycare facility. I know doggy daycares and dogs can be bad at home and good there. <clears throat> or dogs can be bad at home and good here at my place. I mean, they're usually good here, but. How do I fix my problem at home? Okay, two dogs fight at home, but are fine at doggy daycare. And when they are groomed, so they're fine when they're groomed, how do I fix my problem at home? Uh, and are in separate rooms at the daycare. Crate and rotate has been my only option. Uh, I, think I, I, I think I did videos on this, guys. This is probably, this is huge, right? My two dogs fight at home. My dogs don't fight around. Generally speaking, once they know me, they kind of don't fight around me. Uh, I'm the boss. They Here's where you start. They shouldn't sleep in the bed with you. They need to come when they're called. They should not jump on you, especially when you come home, and they can't pull you down the street. Those four things. You work on those four things. I'll, by the time you're done, I'll probably do another live stream where you can ask. I'll try to get your question. Do those four things because you're not doing those four things. I guarantee it. Okay, Rebecca, you, you're just not, no one is right. Or they'll do, they say, my dog doesn't sleep with me. He doesn't jump on, but he never comes in cold. He's just blowing you off. When you say come, he goes, no, nah, I don't feel like it. Why would he then not fight with the other dog? <clears throat> he doesn't listen to you. Why would he then not listen to you when you say, Hey, not when you say knock it off. Why would he listen to you and not fight the other dog? So start there. That's not the only answer. It's the start though. Okay, Rebecca. All right. Uh, someone's answering someone else's questions. Have you tried a squirt bottle? I don't use squirt bottles, but they're not bad. My pup knows where the end of the leash is. Yeah, that's common. Um, I know that's a, that's not a problem, but so before I correct her, she stops. Maybe more important, she doesn't seem to give me the look back to see where I am. All right, use some more treats for the look back, okay? And then what you can do too, I know, I teach a lot of dogs and they get good on leash where they're not pulling, but they're like always in front. And then when I stop, they look at me, but they're always kind of out there. You can just like kind of mix it up a little bit, just like randomly turn, right? Don't be so predictable. Stop and like, like try to fake them out a little bit. And you just want to mix up their life a little bit. They got you figured out. Okay. So do some more turns, do some more stops uh, and add some more treats. All right. I'm going to try to get to like brand new questions. We're getting up there in numbers. Holy mackerel. Um, what age to spay a female dog, Sager? I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a female dog spaying expert by any means. I have no I have no opinions on it. I tell you my opinion if I'm not an expert, but I don't I don't even have an opinion. Okay. Thoughts on engage, disengage for reactivity? Uh Winnie? You mean take teaching them like bite work and then to stop bite work? Like to let up, engage, then disengage for reactivity? I don't totally understand that question. Okay. All right. Uh, could you please talk about neutering dogs? I did it on the last live stream, maybe. All right. Here's the deal with neutering your dogs. The most heat I ever got was for that video of Prince and that Wine Rhymer Great Dane mix. Look at each other. And in that video, or excuse me, before that video, I did a video, I didn't post it, of a one-year-old German Shepherd, a one-year-old Rottweiler, and two-year-old Prince, all three unneutered dogs in that office. And here's what they were doing. They were walking around each other, looking at each other like, what's up? What's up? It's like three dudes, like ready to kind of fight, not really fight, but like going like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That was all from not being neutered. Okay. Um, does that mean we neuter those dogs? No, it doesn't. But just understand, there is a different energy, which you can't see on camera when I post these videos. There's a different energy when with unneutered dogs that are not super playful. So the unneutered dogs and they're a little reactive, there's a different energy in the room, okay? You have to make a decision whether you want that. What about the dogs that obsessively lick, I have them out here all the time, the genitals of other dogs. And the person goes, yeah, I want to take my dog to the dog park, but I can't when they're doing that. And I go, no, you can't. That's gross. 
And they're like, yeah, well, what do I do? My vet said not till a year or two years old. I won't do it before two years old. Okay, well, you got to make decisions in life. You can't have it both ways. I could, I could probably get rid of the behavior, but I don't know if you could get rid of the behavior. So I don't know. And I can't get it rid of it in an hour session and, or maybe even a two-week born train. If I own the dog, I probably could. Here's my point. You got to make decisions in life. You want to neuter your dog, there's pros. You want to, and there's cons. You want, you want to keep them intact, there's pros and cons. That's life. Uh, Europe, the people from Europe, like, hated it. Like, my neutering stance, when this one video, I was like, this dog should be neutered. And I'd say it again. And they were like, you need to educate yourself, like, because, like, certain countries, Scandinavian countries, have, like, banned neutering. I don't care what some Scandinavian countries have done. It doesn't mean it's right. Just because the governments of those countries ban neutering. I'm the one out here with thousands of dogs watching what's going on. Now, my, not, my dog's not neutered for a reason. I'm not pro-neutering. There's moments your dog's obsessively, obsessively licking the genitals of other dogs. Okay, uh, you want to go to the dog park. But you can't have both ways. So you got to make a choice. I'm not saying that's your question. Just the neutering thing, right? You got to make the, you know, will I neuter my dog someday? I don't know. I might, I might not. You got to make those choices. Hi, Joel. So there, we're going to reignite the neutering controversy on this live stream. Um, some guy on the neutering, he, he emailed me personally. He's like, you should look at the studies done by the, by the Scandinavian countries on neutering. And I'm like, okay. I want to learn. I want to, I want to figure out this out. I looked him up and I emailed him back. I'm like, I looked up a bunch. Like, what are you talking? Never even know me back. He just wanted to email to tell me to look at something, but didn't actually point me in the direction of anything specific. You're great. My dog is great. He's just a jackass. Okay. Daniel. Thank you. 250 views. Oh, it tells you how many viewers we have. That's, I didn't know you guys could see that. Yeah. 250. That's pretty good. Um, Sanka, stop, man. Ruining things for others. Your question is hard to answer. Okay. I don't know what you guys are doing. Engage, disengage, as in reactive dog looks at other dog while under threshold. As soon as they look, we treat and over time. And over time, this is supposed to lessen reactivity. Question mark. Okay. I like this, Winnie. I found your question. Engage, disengage, as in Reactive dog looks at other dog while under threshold. Okay. All right. It looks at other dog while under threshold. As soon as they look, we treat. And over time, this is supposed to lessen reactivity. Yeah. Like it's the positive reinforcement mantra of how to deal with reactivity. Um, how are they doing on that? How are the videos on YouTube doing on that? Go, it's not going great, right? Under threshold, look away. The point is the treat will never be as reinforcing as the reactivity is. That's the whole problem with that. That's the whole problem. The treat is not nearly as much as the reinforcement they get from freaking out on dog. Because their life is like, well, I hang with this lady. I go on walks. Rah, 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 rah. All these things fire off in their brain. They love it. Or, they, or maybe they bark and the dog leaves and they want the dog to leave so they get reinforced that way. There's all this reinforcement with reacting that treats generally don't compete with. That's the problem. Okay? So um, I gave a correction and sometimes this video I did a few days ago, the dog was freaking out on the dog. And I just went, okay, let's go see the dog. What do you want? Like, I want to know what you want. You got your ticket. I'm going to let you go to that dog. Um, so, but the, my last point was kind of the main point. The reactivity is generally more reinforcing than the treat. So how do you get rid of a behavior when the behavior itself is more reinforcing than the reinforcement they get for not doing the behavior? All right. People on Reddit cannot stand this channel. If I suggest that Reddit people are positive only in my experience. Yeah, I've heard that. People, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't go on Reddit much. Um, they're, I don't, I don't know. They're not, um, I don't know what that's about. Hi, Joel. 
Four and a, you guys have a lot of puppy questions. Four and a half month black lab bites and barks at me when we don't play with him or show any other kind of, or shows any kind of disappointment. All right, satiation. Puppies, guys, you gotta be patient. You gotta work their jaws. So they should be chewing on things, marrow bones, bully sticks, and uh, 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 marrow bones, bully sticks, and food filled frozen Kongs are my big three. They're safe, they're reinforcing, they're long lasting. Then you have to get your dog with other dogs too, okay? So they can bite and mouth and do all the stuff to other dogs they want to do on you. Because other dogs really don't care, oddly. Some do. Those they, I've seen little puppy teeth dog, dogs bite other dogs. Their dogs don't care. And I'm like, how do you? How is that not hurting you? The other dog like doesn't care. I call it the satiation method. I love it. I think it's so great. But maybe you can't get them with other dogs or don't want to because of vaccinations. But you've got to get them working their jaws, working those little things. Okay, that's number one. There's other things, but that would be the big one. Most bang for your buck is satiation on chewing things and chewing on dogs. All right. <clears throat> All right. My male husky, four, another young dog, four months. Male husky, four month old, starts biting and jumping randomly when we go on walks. I don't know why he does that. I don't know what to do. Uh, biting and jumping you, I'm guessing. Start running maybe. Get some, get that fast exercise out. Be like, we're going. Get him thinking about something else. I mean, he's young. You don't want to run a lot. But maybe get him moving. Uh, um, you could redirect with something, you know. Okay, wheelchair, wheelchair dog, small, loses her mind, barks excessively. Okay, my mail. Huh? Okay. Um, what are we at? We're sticking around 450 people. How would you train a husky compared to other dogs? I would <clears throat> work on recall a lot, hardcore from when they're young. Uh, huskies are just different dogs. By the way, I posted this on Facebook like years ago. Other dogs react to huskies. I have my theory why, and I think I'm right. What's your theory? Why do other dogs react poorly? Not all. People come here all the time and they go, my dog likes other dogs but hates huskies. I hear it. I've heard it over the years so many times. Why do you think other dogs react to huskies? I have a very specific answer and I want to hear yours. So I'm going to go to the bottom. Bottom of the comments to see if you guys answer. All right. And I'll answer other questions as we do this. Nine month old Doberman, what's the best advice to get the attention when you see another dog or pulls? Nine months, guys. Be patient at nine months, it's tough. You can lure them with a treat if they're food motivated, or you could let them leave you. Oh, another dog, stop, give a little correction. Those are the two main ways to get their attention. But understand, nine months old is the toughest time to own a dog. Their brain is changing. You can just be patient and just, I call it trudging through. They're like, another dog, oh my God. And you just kind of put the leash on your side and just trudge through. If you're like, I can't get their attention. I don't want to correct my dog, hardcore. I don't want to give treats or I can't give treats. You just kind of get through it, you know, live to fight another day, as I say, because of the wolf. first answer I looked at is because of the wolf, maybe by Ak, Akmomo. And that's right. That's what I think. I think they look like a wolf or a coyote and other dogs don't like that. <clears throat> so good job. First answer I looked at. That's my answer to why, hus why dogs react to huskies. It's weird. My first dog, we have coyotes like in the pasture next to us sometimes my, my my dogs love dogs both my dobermans he'd play with the dog then he'd see a coyote and he'd want to kill the coyote and i'm like how do you know that's not a dog it just looks like a dog in a field he knew he's like no 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 that ain't a dog how do you know i don't know i mean i can tell that there are coyotes so i guess he can but it's kind of weird i think it's because huskies look like wolves or coyotes and dogs do it. Good job. Good answer. Uh, well, really, because they look like a wolf. Terry Davis, same thing. Good job, Terry Davis. Um, okay. Oh, we're going up in numbers. I don't care about numbers. It's just kind of cool. Uh, what are your thoughts on prong collars uh, if the gentle leader doesn't work? I gave that answer either in this video or at another live stream 10 minutes ago that went bad. I did give it, so just try to go back. Um, Angus, um, is it okay if your dog walks slowly, slightly ahead of me during walks as long as he isn't pulling? I think so. And he should be checking in with you. But yeah, I think so. 
boy, a lot of four month old advice on dogs that don't understand personal space constantly have to be on their near people. Yeah. Some people don't mind it. I have a dog here right now that like, I know the owner just like strokes this dog all day long. So the dog comes and it's just like, like, Oh my God, like touch me all the time. And I'll pet it sometimes. And sometimes I'm just like, go like, they got to learn to be away from you. Got to learn. Go, go, go. You're not going to get touched all the time. Kids are the same way. I mean, you don't say go like that, but like they go be by yourself. You're okay. Go eat a bone, marrow bone, food full, frozen con. Go. You got to learn to be by yourself. Advice on dogs that don't understand personal. Oh, we already got to that. Ooh, 15 month old English, old English bulldog. Stops on walks on the time and will all the time and will budge. Tried tugs, but he just digs his heels in any advice. Stopping on walks is a question I get a lot, and I just don't have here that many dogs. When I used to do private sessions at people's homes, it happened a fair amount. It never happens here for some reason, but <clears throat> it's a couple things. Sometimes you can lure with a treat, get it moving. Sometimes I, just, when they're young dogs, I've been in people's houses, I'm just like, they stopped, and they're like stopping to smell the roses. They're not actually smelling. They're just sitting there, and I'm like, they need to just sit here. Just let them sit here and lay in the grass for a minute, let their brain take in what's going on. They're six months old, like it's eight months old. They wanna just, just take it all in. So just let's stay here for a little bit. So if he's like sitting there and like, like going like, ah, oh, I like it here, this is nice. I'm gonna smell, maybe stay there for a little bit. If he's like, and I think even if he's not stopping to smell the roses, just stay there for a minute, shake his world up. You've heard me say that before. Shake his world up and just stand there and just be like, yeah, we'll just stand here. And he's like, what? This lady's just standing. She usually pulls me. Why is she just standing here? And then when it's time, then give it some time and then be like, come on. And he might be like, oh, yeah, okay. you got to change things up with your dog. If your dog is doing something, one thing I like to do is just change things. If they're on a normal collar, I'll change it to this. If, they, if they're bad on the gentle leader, I'll change it to normal collar. If they learn to fight you on the easy walk, I'll change to a normal. I just want change. Dogs learn how what you do and how to counter what you do. Change their world up. Okay? That's one thing dog trainers do well. Is they just do something different, and the dog's like, oh, that's different. I'll listen to that because it's, it's different. More nine month old. Holy. You guys have a lot of young dogs or a lot of young dog questions. I got to do more puppy videos. Um, Aaron, I'll answer your question. You've asked, you keep asking it. I have a nine month old Doberman. He gets aggressive when he sees a street dog, but he is calm when he sees a dog who's leashed. Okay. So he has reactivity or aggression. Uh, uh I don't know if it's on leash or off leash. Aaron, I would just, I would just refer you to videos on leash reactivity that I have on loose leash walking that I have. If he's off leash, you need to get a hardcore recall. And the minute he sees that street dog, they, they, they usually don't just sprint after the dog. They perk up, they see the dog, then they go. You need to be like, get their attention, because he's locked in, right? Dobermans have a prey guard. He's like, street dog. You need to be like, hey, come here. If he doesn't, you grab him, bring him over. We're not messing. Then do that little butt touch thing. I just did a video on that, butt touch thing. Don't, because <clears throat> they're just locked in, you need to flip them around a little bit. I hope that. <coughs> answers your question here. Um, all right. So, guys, uh, I have a question. Sorry. So I have a nine-month-old. Why am I getting so, so many nine-month-old dog questions? I'll tell you why. Because nine months is the hardest time to own a dog. They're almost full size. Their brain is changing. They're going through the fear period, their worst fear period. That's why they're the nine months is the best time to do a born train with your dog. <clears throat> I tell people to, it's the hardest time to own a dog by far. Nine months to like a year, but I think like nine months. <coughs> Excuse me. He like barks and bites at me, show, shows he's angry. Is that normal? Yeah, it's probably normal for five months old. Watch my satiation video. Where's my water? <coughs> All right. 
five-month-old German Shepherd aggressive, or you might be aggressive, barks towards children and other dogs. Uh, get children to treat the dog and get your dog around children. They need to desensitize to things, not in their face, but like on a leash. <clears throat> dogs can't get better with things they don't see. Children are a weird one, okay? A four-year-old is not, or a three-year-old kid to a dog is not a little person. A three-year-old is a little alien. They don't get it. I have an 11-year-old, 10-year-old, four-year-old. Dogs are great with the 11 and 10-year-old because they're normal looking humans. They're just small. Three-year-olds are weird. Even babies, they get, oh, babies are fine. Three-year-old, two-year-old, they're weird to dogs. So you've got to get them up. They don't desensitize the things they don't see. So if the kids can feed them, that's kind of conditioning. That's great. But at least get your dog around them. Okay. All right. Let's see. My roommate's ba my roommate babies her small dog. It barks at everything and it is driving me nuts. Send her to this channel, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> it's your roommate. Someone's laughing at... I don't know what I said, but uh, any advice on safely introducing a new dog to a house cat? Oh, cats are tough because they're cats. Cats are skittish. I like cats. I don't hate cats. Uh, I want to work with big cats. That was my, that's why I went to the animal, the, the, I wanted to go to Africa and do conservation work with big cats. Lions are my favorite animal. Um, <clears throat> but I've worked with big cats. Okay. Cats, cats are tough. I've done a lot of sessions in people's homes with cats. I sit there with a the dog on the leash. <clears throat> I reinforce the leash. I reinforce them. The cat comes down. I try to desense the dog to the cat. And then the cat just like runs and does all crazy stuff and it's hard. Desensitization is probably the biggest one. The dog needs to be in a crate a lot or baby gates or whatever and just see the cat and desensitize the cat. Desensitization is one of the greatest things in the world. <clears throat> Has to happen, okay? You just, you gotta find ways to desensitize your dog to the cat. <clears throat> I don't know why I have something in my throat. Okay. That kid Roma, is there a way people can do a one-on-one -on -one training session with you? Yeah, I, on my website, BeckmansDogTraining.com, I have a phone call with me. I have a Zoom session with me. You can sign up. Dates come up. Boom, you sign up, and we do the deal. It's with me. It's not with one of my trainers. <clears throat> uh, BeckmansDogTraining.com, you just sign up, and, and, and we do it. I've, we might be full for a little bit. And then there's private sessions. You sign up on there, too. It's all on BeckmansDogTraining.com. Okay? Three-year-old American Staffordshire and is a dog park smelling every dog, but when one barks at her, she goes full kill mode and gets in a fight. Yeah, she can't do that. I mean, that's obvious. But like, I have dogs out here all the time and they'll be like, they'll go up and smell a dog and then the other dog tries to smell them and the dog's like, maybe not full kill mode, but like, get out of here. No, no, that's not the way the world works. Like, you can't just go smell a dog and then go, no, you, you can't smell me. It's not cool. You know that. I'm not telling you something you don't know. Um, I would say dog parks might not be your place. Dog parks are nuts. Um, um, you could do some sessions with a muzzle, like with friends' dogs. I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough deal when dog goes into that because we got to be safe. And how are you safe? I did a session, a video... A week ago, <clears throat> it's got a mastiff on the thumbnail, but it's two sessions and it's got a, uh, a staff, a staffy in there. And she goes at my dog. You might want to watch that. Okay. You should hook up with Kevin Richards on lion. Uh, I don't know who Kevin Richardson is in reference to lions. I don't want to work with lions anymore. I have a family now. No more big cats. Big cats are super unpredictable. If you guys have any exotic questions, we can talk about that too. But you have dog questions. <clears throat> cats are cats. It's like your little cat. You're like rubbing it and it like attacks your hand. That's because they're freaking crazy cats. Lions the same way. Leopards, all of them. 
except cheetahs. Cheetahs are different. Cheetahs are like dogs. <clears throat> Nine month old Doberman. Wow, a lot of, yeah, I guess because I have Dobermans, a lot of, how do orcas express their love for their trainer? They, um, I don't know if they, it's hard to see orca love. They're, they're soft, soft with you, right? Their eyes and their mouth is, not, they're not expression animals. It's hard to really see it. <clears throat> do I have a favorite breed? Track. Yeah, Dobermans. Why do I have a Doberman? People ask that. So I had Bosco randomly. We were looking at Ridgebacks, American Bulldogs, and Dobermans. Those were the dogs that we were looking at. I'm glad I didn't get a, uh, uh American Bulldog. I'm actually glad I didn't get either. They're fine breeds, both Ridgebacks and Bulldogs. But we were not like super educated 15 years ago on breeds. And we just saw an American Bulldog that we liked, this female, she went too big, and it was cool. So we looked at them, Ridgebacks, I've always liked Ridgebacks, and then Dobermans. And then we just got a Doberman somehow, Bosco. And why would I mess with the formula? I'm not messing with the formula, probably never again. I'll probably always have a Doberman, right? They're, they're perfect for what I need. Look at Bosco, look at Prince. I don't, I'm not messing with the formula. My dog is a working dog. He is, <clears throat> he's got a job. His job is what you see in these videos. Do we all love our job 100% of the time? No, Busco's Prince has a good life, plays with dogs, goes on walks, goes places, but he's got a higher purpose in life. And that is to help other dogs, right? People are sometimes like, oh, Prince, is whatever. And then some people are like, Prince is a jerk. <clears throat> he's like, humps dog. I try to stop him. He sometimes humps the dog, I stop him. Um, some people say Prince is mean, and like too bossy. He needs to be bossy. That's his job. He's testing these dogs for me, right? He sometimes needs to chill a little bit. He's still kind of young, but um, he's got a job and his, his, that's his job. Hi, Joel, love your videos. Any tips to stop a dog scavenging? Yeah, they're head down. It's tough. Use treats and just give them that stuff up. Give up, bring their head from here, the treats, bring their head a little more here. But does it mean they're gonna look at you the whole time? No, but it means they're gonna be like scavenge, scavenge, scavenge. Oh, where's that? I know you might give me a treat. Okay, just use some treats to get them up there a little bit. <clears throat> Have I been bit by a killer whale? No, if you're bit by a killer whale, you're not alive. Um, they don't, they bite, they do bite, but like they do other things if they wanna hurt you. Biting isn't really their thing to hurt you. They use their tail, they use their body. Um, and if, if they bite you, they'll just crush you. Um, okay, how do I get my nine-year-old dog to not get aggressive with other dogs when they are all barking at the mailman guy, at the UPS guy? How do I get my nine-year-old dog not to not aggressive, to not get aggressive with other dogs when they're all, oh, like the other dogs in your home? Um, I hate to keep saying it, I, I, but I don't have time to get into the specifics. You're the boss of your house. When they, when they go up and bark, you go grab them, you back them up, you tell them, you, you get in front of them, you shoo them away from the door, go. And if they go, oh, I'm going to go to the mailman, you're going to grab them. You're going to say, that's not how this works. You guys run your house. Run it. You're the boss. I'm not saying it's easy. By any means, multi-dog freaking out at UPS guy. I'm not saying it's easy, but start the process of running your home, being the boss of your home, okay? <clears throat> I think my last, a couple of videos ago, I talked about that. Um, I know it's, it's a big answer, it's broad strokes, but it's an attitude thing. I'm gonna come out with an ebook that's about like that. That's the... I'm not gonna just be like, oh, loose leash walking, here's how you do it. Like, here's how you do everything. Like, you're running the show. How do you exercise your Doberman, Aaron? Uh, you um, walks. So here's my exercise spiel that I've been giving for 12 years. The least amount of exercise, no, what everybody can do watching this, you can all do more probably, but I, a lot of my things are for the lady, the single mom with three kids. Right, that that's very different from a person, single person during COVID, 
has all the time in the world and they can walk their dog 10 miles a day. That's nice. Not everyone's like that. Here's my exercise spiel. A walk every day, one walk every day. You can do more. You should do more. Minimum, one walk every day and then twice a week the dog opening up. What does that mean? They're sprinting. They're wrestling. It's a ball, not in your backyard. Your backyard doesn't count. Your house doesn't count for exercise. People go, oh yeah, my dog gets a lot of exercise. He just runs around the backyard. And I go, I don't care. It's not enough. Your dog needs to be uh, outside of the house, being mentally stimulated. Your yard, your house doesn't matter. I go to rich people's houses or used to all the time. <clears throat> and they just keep their dog in their big, big, nice property with a pool. And I go, it doesn't count. You not, you got to get your dog out of this house. Go on walks. And then rest. So two times a week, opening up, sprinting in a field, chasing a ball in a field, dog park if you're into dog parks, doggy daycare if you're into doggy daycares, <clears throat> maybe running with you, but that's really not opening up. They're not going that fast because you're not that fast. Okay. Seven days a week walks. Uh, now that's Aaron, um, Aaron. So that's how you get your dog exercise, but playing with dogs is the biggest one. Treats haven't helped yet with my three month old beagle tension on walks, but I figure that's a breed thing. It is a breed thing. We're still working on it. Yeah. Good job. Still work on it. I see an SOS. What is that? Um, best guarding breed for first time dog owners. <clears throat> Isaac. Um, I think Isaac's asked done a lot of comments on my channel uh guarding breed i guess guarding like your house guarding um first time dog owner get like a get like a don't first time dog owner wouldn't be like a rottweiler it wouldn't you could get like a ridgeback guarding dogs guy guarding 90 percent of guarding is the look of the dog that's that it's the size and the look of a dog not actually, I'm going to go bite this intruder. Like, I have two um, Kane Corsos here that look gnarly and are actually very fearful. But I think you probably walk into their home. Like, they won't bite you. They're just gnarly looking dogs. That's a big deal. So I'd say I'd get the working breed, get a German working breed looking dog, right? I wouldn't get a German Shepherd uh, for a variety of reasons. Get like a Doberman. Um, Get a Ridgeback. Um, boxers, they're awfully small. You know, don't get any like serious guarding breed and don't get it from like this dog's bred for that. Just get a good dog. The look of the dog is made it. That's why they made Dobermans look the way they do. Big barrel chest, the colors, tail. They just want a scary looking dog. Scary. Okay, here's a question for you guys. Scariest looking breed for my money. For my money, the scariest looking dog is an over 100 pound Doberman. That's like a big, I'm not talking little Doberman like Prince. A 100 pound Doberman is a crazy looking dog. Because you're like, they're going to catch me. Look how freaking fast that dog looks. And that nose, they're going to get me. I've dealt with little short nosed dogs and they try to bite you. They don't even bite you. Their little nose, like in their teeth, they, right, 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 right. they don't even get you. That don't, why are wolves made with long noses? Because those four inches are the difference between them eating and not eating. Those four inches of that long nose, German Shepherd, Doberman, <clears throat> wolf, is that that's going to get you. With those canines on the end, they're going to get you. And the big head of a big Doberman, Kangol. Yeah, I haven't worked with many. Roddy, yeah. Oh, this person, Luna agrees with me. Yeah, I just, just big Dobermans, there's something about them. Um, trying to think. I mean, any mastiff, big old mastiff. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. Interesting question. You're welcome, Isaac. Hopefully, I answered your question. Um, you guys only answered like three people answered my mean. Oh, scary breed pit bull. Yeah, pit bulls. <clears throat> pit bulls. Oh, dog Argentino. Connie Corso are scary looking. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Good, you guys answered it. Roddy. Roddy's are serious. Our neighbor had a Rottweiler. The father-in-law, like, kind of got mad at the kids. Like, not mean, just kind of got mad. 
the Roddy jumped up and pinned him against the wall. Didn't do anything to him. Just put his paws like that. That's crazy. That's serious guarding and restraint from the dog. That's some serious stuff. Roddy's are good guard dogs, in my opinion. Why would I not get a German Shepherd? Uh, I never thought about a German Shepherd, really, getting a German Shepherd. Just wasn't on our radar. Dog park every day, says Harsh. I wouldn't, I, it depends on dog park, depends on your dog. I could take Bosco, my old dog, to a dog park every day. He'd probably never get in a fight ever in his whole life because he was a likable dog. Depends on your dog. Depends on the dog park. There's a dog park here like 20 miles away. It's all clicky. So there's this group over here and they got their dogs. And then you walk around and their dogs say, get out of here to the dog. And then there's this group over here and they don't like this group of people. Weird, weird places. Okay. But there's good ones. Um, I think that's just that dog park really. My eight month old Dobie is fine at dog parks until a dog chases her. Yeah. And then she yelps. Yeah. That's, that's actually common. Prince did that a little bit. Eight months though. That's tough. Like let her get more <clears throat> desensitized to the world and more confident and then give it another shot. All right. Um, All right. Well, guys, I'm going to, and I'm, I'm not going to go anywhere, but uh, how do I teach my Doberman effective game of fetch? Uh, fetch is an interesting thing. Be in your house, throw the ball like down the hall, and then like they go get it. It's the bringing back that's most people's hard part. So, so I, I kind of throw, I do in the house because outside they're like, oh, I got distracted by something. I go out hallway throw it, they go get it. And then as they start to come back with it, they often drop it early, like too early. So you want to kind of go like drop it and then like go to them to get it. So they're learning like, oh, I'm supposed to bring it to that guy. So even if they don't bring it to you, you extend your body and you kind of let them know that like they're supposed to drop it near your hands. So if they drop it early, your hands are there. Does that make sense? And then they drop it, then they'll slowly bring it closer and closer to you. Um, but if the dog's not into actual, also, if they're not into fetch, there's fetching, then there's bringing back. They're two different behaviors. <clears throat> he should be in the fetch because he's a doberman, but keep it short and sweet. And don't like chuck the ball, like do it short distances. Then get a few where he's like running, playing, and then quit. Quit where you're ahead and come back another day and do it. So keep it, keep it short and sweet. All right. Um, Took my young black lab to town today. I was using your leash corrections of people who came up to him and get and get so excited. And do I just hold him steady in those situations? Took my so he's young. Yeah, you can do like the leash step on thing, you know? Drop the leash, step on it, and the dog's like pulling. And you're like, you're not going anywhere. Then they jump. I did a, a method on uh, the leash step on method. When the dog jumps, you give it like eight inches of slack, dog jumps and corrects himself. I love methods where the dog, you can stop correcting yourself anytime. People are like, oh, that's, if you give a correction, it's mean. It can be too hard. It can be mean. But what about if the dog just learns he can avoid it and he keeps doing it? They shouldn't keep doing it if they don't like it or if it's painful. They'll stop doing it. Okay. How do you get your Doberman to be bigger? And is American or European bigger? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like European Dobermans are generally bigger, but I don't know. Um, I'm not like a breed. I know a lot about breeds, but I don't know a lot about breeding. It's not. It's it's not where my focus has been. So I'm. I don't know. Okay. Best tips on research regarding humans. Usually around one dog not multiple, right? Research regarding humans is about getting the dog out of the circle of trust. It, I know it's hard. I do it in my facility all the time, but it's a controlled environment. Dog is near you and goes, get out of here to the other dog. I go, tell him, go. And you get the dog, your dog on the outside looking in. I know it's hard on a leash. It's impossible on a leash actually. But if you can do it, go to your dog. And the dog's like on the outside while you pet another dog. Then they try to come in and you're like, push them away. It's a big deal for a dog. It's a big deal for your dog. You can pet whoever you want. You're the mom. You're the dad. Whoever you want. Is Prince a working line domain? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, please do more live chats. Oh, thank you. I will. Hey, bro, have a question, please. How do you hide a body? No idea, man. Um, what should I do if my puppy turns around to bite me anytime? I pull him back and stop him from chewing or biting something. What do I do if my puppy turns around? Give him something else. So it's called a redirection method. Rope toys are good for it. Squeakies are good for it. Just redirect. Puppies need to be redirected a lot. <clears throat> Let's see, what else? Should I be concerned with my 11 month old Kane Corso? God, I have a lot of, con I guess because I've done like three video, three videos with Kane Corsos, but I get so many questions. I didn't know they were that popular of a breed. I, um, um, I have a video coming out Monday. I'm walking, because you guys keep asking about multi, walking multiple dogs. So I'm like, okay, I'm not even gonna go two dogs. I'm going three dogs. And it's two Kane Corsos and a, uh, and a Rottweiler from the same house. And I just start filming and I show you what I do. And it's pretty nutty, like, because one of them's scared. And it's, and then by the end of it, man, these guys are walking good, walking well. So I don't remember your question. Um, uh, sorry, I missed that question. Luna says, European Dobermans aren't necessarily bigger, but the, but the look bigger and stronger. Okay. Yeah, Prince is like a, we named him Prince partly because he's like a little Prince. Like he, he's that kind of thin. And <clears throat> so thank you for answering that. If, if that is in fact correct. What should I do when my puppy sees another dog on a walk? She pulls, stays there and stares from afar. I don't think staring is fine. Like if a dog, a puppy stops and stares at a dog, like I'd let him stare. Like you know, take it all in, look at him. My 13 week old puppy does not like to walk away from the house. Should I be concerned? 13 weeks. I wouldn't be concerned, but I would start working on it. Like I would just go sit in the front yard if you have a yard. Uh, well, you said house, so it's not an apartment. I'd go sit there and, and just get him used to right at the front of the house. And then the next day, go five feet farther and then walk, sit there in the grass or whatever, and then walk. And just walk down the street a little bit. And then the dog's walking with you. Turn back, take him home. Just progress a little more every day. Okay. Okay. A lot of young dog. I got to make more young dog videos for you guys. These are all, man, all nine-month-old dogs. All nine-month-old. A young dog. Remember, guys. Nine months, they're almost, they're getting to be an adult soon. Like young puppies, be patient. If you people have kids and they go, this kid's gonna go through the terrible twos, this kid's and it's gonna flip out and it's gonna do all this stuff. And then they get a dog and they're like, and you guys are patient, but like you get a dog and you're like, how do I fix this with my four month old dog? There's not always fixing of things. Their brain is completely, they're not that, they're not smart. They're not that smart. Their brain is changing. They're, they're babies. Like you have to just get through periods. I'm not saying you don't work on it, but just understand you got to get through. Get through these, get through times, okay? So just remember to always, be, we can fix anything later, right? You can call me, make an appointment. We can talk and we can fix this stuff. How long did my Doberman take to hit maturity? Depends on what you think is maturity, uh, full grown. <clears throat> he was as tall as he is now, probably like 10 months, nine months. Um, okay. All right. You guys have a ton of questions. Okay, here. A lot of puppy. I'm gonna make more puppy videos. That's what you guys want. How, can I hold a collar of a five month old puppy and scold him as a form of correction or is he too young? Hold the collar and scold him. Um, yeah, no, probably not. Like 
like the worst thing that a five month old dog would could do would be like probably like biting you. And then you can kind of grab them. They feel the energy in your arm, but like you don't want to, punishment shouldn't be like this long process. Like it's very quick. Hey, and then you grab them, sit them down. There shouldn't be a lot of talking with punishment. Okay. It's all energy. It's all your body. That's mainly what it is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's go. Let's go. Three more questions. I will try to answer them. We're at an hour. Holy mackerel. This goes quick. Three questions. I will answer them trying not to be quick with the answer. Right? Because I, I realize I'm not going to answer most questions thoroughly because there's just not time. Dude, there's quite there's if I sit with a client and answer the question, it's 10 minutes long. The answer is 10 minutes long. Wow, you guys are really asking a lot. Okay. Lone Wolves 85. What can I do when my Aussie immediately redirects aggressively on me and when he sees other dogs? If I give him any correction or even simple commands, he will redirect on me. He always needs a muzzle arm. All right. That's a real question and a real hard topic. And he's got not, it's an Aussie. It happens with Aussies all the time. We need to chill the guy out before you see the thing. Okay. I would do my doorway method hardcore. The dog's got to walk out of the house like the calmest dog ever, or at least 80% what he usually is. So my correct, turn around, continue to do that. Then I would get, or in your backyard, or in your front of your apartment, or in the front of your house, I do calm rules. I just do big, boring circles. Walking around in a big, boring circle. Consistent, boring circle. Not walk like this, dog pulls me over here, so I'm going to come over here, then I'm going to go back to my circle. I just hold the leash on my side. I just walk in a big circle. Get, get used to it. You also get a little bit of that energy out. And they acclimate to wherever they are. Oh, yeah. I'm in the front of my house. Oh, Charlie, he at the fence down there. I hate that guy. And now you're just walking in a big circle and just desensitizing to things. Then you go back to walk. Dog walks in front of you. Give him a correction. Turn the other way. Then you see a dog. People always go, oh, when I'm walking, <clears throat> this other trainer or whatever, they told me to avoid the dog. Avoiding dogs are fine, especially for training. So with you, I would be, I would be, I would be crossing the street because we have to find the threshold. Okay, we have to find where he won't react. You might say, well, it's 100 feet. Well, that, that's tough, but maybe you can find that point. You then keep him away from you. Right? He's an Aussie. He's probably not big. They can get big, but and you kind of keep him away from you and you stop. But then if he, and then the minute he zeroes in on the dog. Sees the dog 100 feet, 20 feet, whatever it is, you stop, you give a little correction to him, okay? If the distance is enough, he, he might not flip out on you if it's the dog's 100 feet away, all right? Redirecting on you, is I mean, it's tough. Their brain is somewhere else. It sucks. But the principles of calming him down in an undistracted environment or early on the walk often will help, okay? I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> let's find out. Puppies. Puppies. Pu German Shepherds. A lot of unsocialized 16-month Yorkie only knows to bark excessively when playing at dog park. How should I try to fix this? Unsocialized 16-month Yorkie just barks at the dog park. Um, I would say that we are at this point, you're a little behind the eight ball. He's an adult and he's unsocialized. He's essentially an adult and he's overwhelmed with movement or with something like we kind of, I hate to say this, kind of missed it, right? You said he's unsocialized. I didn't say that. You said that. We, we, there, there's a reason that there's these first 10, 12 months to do certain things. Then, as I say, the window or the door shuts. So I would get him around dogs, but not in a crazy environment. Okay. If you think he's just barking because he's like, I'm not, I'm a little overwhelmed, but I just feel like barking. I would say, I'd like clap, be like, hey, and just kind of snap out. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was barking, but okay, lady. So we missed the mark a little bit if he's unsocialized. Calm him down, get him around other dogs, and then you can um, uh, maybe just mark the behavior. One more question. All right, one more question. Try to get a common one. 
Okay, this, this person has a lot. Okay. Uh, unknown from Mayor Doberman wants to kill livestock. Oh, sucks. How do I correct and control him when he gets into kill mode? Um, I would have to ask you some questions. Was a shot caller used? Prong or uh, e-caller? It often is in these cases, um, which can make this behavior worse. Can stop him, can also make him worse in many ways. Um, I hate to say it, like you being the boss is a big deal, but it, it's, an, it's a broad stroke answer. Oh, answer. Okay, last one. <clears throat> All right, here's a good one. How do I stop a god dog fight? Actually, I made a video on that. Rather than answer questions on here, I'd rather just say a month ago, over a month ago, I made a video on how to stop a dog fight. Honestly, I'm just going to direct you there rather than, okay? Press a canario, puppy, three months, and he plays very rarely, and he eats very less, very less. Um, three months old and he plays very rarely and he eats very less any issues. I'm sorry, I can I don't, I just don't understand the question. Uh, you gotta get him playing. Oh, he's three months, he's young. All right, last question. I have a working line German Shepherd puppy with a high drive, what age should I introduce corrections? Working line German Shepherd with a high drive uh, to give and maintain structure. Um, I'm, I'm patient with puppies. However, I would give, I mean, I don't know if you, from a very early age, I mean, there's some corrections, like not correct, like not harsh, but there's something of saying, you know, like making a little noise, hey, knock it off and like grabbing them. Um, um, how do I give, it's, it's a, that's a tough kind of question, okay. Last one, last one. How can I teach my newly adopted Great Dane to be gentle and watch his step around my two chihuahuas? He's gotten so close to stepping on her and a newly adopted Great Dane. Uh, I would treat those little chihuahuas as gold. You need to let that dog know these little chihuahuas are never, are not to be messed with. They're not to be um, uh, jumped around. They're not to be, they are little, they're gold. You keep your distance from them. When the dog gets around the Great Danes, unless, or the puppies, or the chihuahuas, unless the Great Danes are just like, what's up, little dogs? Everything else jumping, getting crazy, not knowing where they are, you're gonna go, hey, go, go. And then I would go pick the little chihuahuas up and I'd be like, I love you, little chihuahuas. And then I'd put them on the ground and then the dog's like, oh, I wanna jump around these dogs. And I'd walk into the Great Dane and I'd be like, go. Like, you need to let the dog know. Cause there's no way to like operate and be like, don't step there, don't step there. You just gotta let them know. These little dogs are like gold. All right, guys, I hope that was good. I tried to get as many as I can. We went an hour and eight minutes. So um, I'm trying to come out with a video every day on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> one last question. Do you guys like the voiceover of the private sessions, the me working one of the dogs and talking directly to the camera about the issues? Or do you like the office stuff? Because this is where I kind of talk about controversial stuff or my opinions on things or give, tell stories. Do you like voiceover? I do three main videos. I do voiceovers of privates, old private sessions, new private. I do a voiceover. I do training of a live dog <clears throat> and I just film it. I don't really, I don't edit it. That's on purpose. So you guys see the process and then there's talking in the office. That's my last question and then we'll go. I just wanna see what you guys say. Voiceover is good. Um, Lou thinks the voiceover is good. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, thank you, Joel, watch every morning. Oh, that's good. I like everything, variety of spice. Okay, Wendy, yeah. Voiceover, no audio. I don't know, uh, no audio. I don't know what that means. Thank you, love your videos. Voiceover, training of a live dog, voiceover. Live training. Yeah, I think they're all they're all good. All of them. She also says all of them. Um, voiceover. People like the voiceovers. Voiceover. All right. So keep recording the live sessions. 
do voiceover stuff because there's too many pauses when I when a client's here. Like I'm not talking to the client the whole time, so I can't really show you guys that. So that's why I do the voiceovers. Um, what does it mean if my puppy? Okay, variety. Okay, good, good, good. Voiceovers, both more puppy training. I agree. Simple family. I agree. Both blend of all three. I like all three. Go with the metrics. It's good advice, Adam. They're all pretty well received, actually. The voiceover ones are longer, so they get maybe a little less views. The office stuff gets a lot of views because then I talk about like my opinions on things. Okay, hey, thank you. I love you guys. I truly do. This channel has risen very fast. I will never forget you guys. Everything I make is for you guys. It is meant for the average dog owner. It is not meant for, uh, I don't do, you know, you see some of these videos and it's like this Malinois that's doing this perfect heel and none of you guys will ever do that. It's not that. This is for the average dog owner to get rid of the big stuff and the stuff that I know is a problem, okay? I'll never stop making it for the normal dog owner who has questions and feels lost and doesn't know what to do. Um, it's broad stroke stuff sometimes I'm not going to get into. Sometimes you'll hear me say, yeah, I missed a treat right there because it doesn't matter. Okay. This is broad stroke stuff for the average person. Um, I do look at all your comments. I don't get back to them all the time. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Soul de music. Sole deo, deo music. I, I always see your comments so on my normal channel. So thank you. All right. Hit the button. Okay, I'm, I'm going. Bye.